Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. One of the uh, assignments I gave in a computer organization class uh, had the students write a very, very simple tic-tac-toe game. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting um, little program for uh, an assembly language uh, assignment. Uh, long but rather straightforward. And I kind of want to show it to you and uh, demonstrate it and then look at the code that I used to write it. Keep in mind that there's, there's several ways to actually do this. The, the basic idea of the program is, is going to be this. These are the steps. Um, you know, print an introductory message and the, uh, the uh, playing board itself. You get the computer's first move and print the board and ask the human uh, for a move, print the board. Get the computer's second move, print the board. Ask for the human's second move, print the board. Now the first possible time that anyone can win is after the computer's made the third move. So we really don't check for a winner until there. So we, we get the computer's third move, print the board, check for a winner, and so on and so forth until we get to the end. Uh, and as I mentioned as a few times, this is a very straightforward game. We don't uh, anticipate ties. We don't look for a tie until the very end, until no one's won. Uh, which you know is not. We could add add. We could add that uh, logic to it if we wanted to. But again, this is just a simple little program. And um, uh, we also have the computer move very unintelligently. In other words, just pick an empty square. Now, as far as checking for uh, winners, printing the board. The printing the board is very straightforward. I. Uh, again, I don't put anything in any loops in this program. It's such a small little playing area that, that the extra logic doesn't really gain you that much. Uh, I print the first square and then a vertical bar, the second square and then a vertical bar, and then the uh, third, uh, let's see, it's third square. i put that in there. Excuse me. Square. Uh, underscores, and then the second row, underscores, and then the third row. And checking for a winner, I actually have a routine that checks for rows, columns, and diagonals. And then I call a routine that actually checks for a winner of a specific row. I pass it the row number, and it checks to see if the first, second, third uh, thing in that row is the same. If it's the same, then there's a winner, uh, same way in the column. So that's kind of the basic design. Okay, let's, let's look at the program run. Uh, I'm using Qt Spim. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to actually go and, and reinitialize the file. There's the uh, uh, file right there, and I'll show that to you in a little bit. So there it loads it. Now I'm going to run the program. I'm going to run, and let me uh, 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 view the console right here. Pull the console up. Okay. So here's what it does. It prints out a message. Hello, professor. Would you like to play tic-tac-toe? Uh, and it prints out the board. Now the board has the squares numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And as a human what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the number where I want the O to go. So the computer moves and it picks the first available one that's an X. So now I'm going to say you know, where do I want the next one to go. So I'm going to say well I want to pick uh, 7. Okay. So now it's going to print out the board and then show me uh, what the computer moved. So I'm going to see an O appear in, in the uh, 7 uh, spot and then uh, X actually picked the next available one which is right next to it. Now if I don't block the computer up in three it's actually going to pick the next available one. It'll actually go ahead and win. I'm going to let it go ahead and win just to kind of show you that. Okay, eight and say ah well the winner is and it picked a, an O right there which is uh, which is uh, or an X which is uh, which is very good. <coughs> little smiley face I, I put that in. All right, let's look at the the uh, code itself. I kind of want to explain it, so let me get rid of the uh, Qt spin, and let's uh, let's bring up the uh, the code itself. Here's the program. Um, it's about 560, 570 lines of assembly code, which is which you might think is quite a bit, but it, it's it's not really. It's uh, 
probably an average size little program. Um, the design considerations are the, the computer always moves first and it's always an X. The human goes next, always an O. So we make it simple. First possible time that you can win is after the computer's third time. So we don't check winners until that time. We could, just not necessary. Uh, the computer moves very unintelligently. So we're just picking the next available square. Ties, we don't detect those until the very end, until no one's won, which again is very, very straightforward. We do it. And the design of the board is as, as this. Now, uh, I'm going to explain assembly language or MIPS assembly along with this. We have the data section here, the dot data, which is where we have all of our declarations. The dot ASCII's uh, items are uh, like C strings that have a, um, a terminating character at the end of them, allows them to uh, tell how big they are. So TTT colon, that's going to be our board. You notice I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I put the 0 in there so that the offset for the first character is 1, the second one is 2, the third 3, and so on and so forth. There's my message to print out, hello professor, would you like to play tic-tac-toe? Notice I've got backslash ends embedded in there, that's the carriage return. And messages, I take a very simple approach to naming them, message 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on and so forth. These are my dashes for the, uh, the board itself. Notice that there's a carriage return both before and afterwards, so I just print this out. There's my uh, single characters, the vertical bar in between the uh, uh, in between the board and this is this is actually what it looks like when it's printed out right here so there's the vertical bar right there uh, I also have the X and O to print out and then a in the line character all right well let's let's go through and let's look at the uh, uh, the board itself I'm going to edit some of these while I'm at it so our program starts out just prints out the message the load immediate um, in register v04 that tells syscall to print out a string the address of the string goes in a0 and when I call syscall it uh, uses that number 4 to to determine what type of thing to print out and the address is a0 to print it out itself that's actually how you have to do a, a print string now what I'm going to show you now is I, I'm going to call a routine to print out the board I'm actually going to call a subroutine this is a very very simple way to do it but um, the protocol is is uh, standard linkage is what's used in assembly language. I have to actually go to the stack space, and that's a specialized register SP that has this is the stack space. The that that points to the end of the stack space. So if I want to get a bit of it, what I have to do is I have to back it up by a full word minus four. So that takes the address, subtracts four from it, and now the plus four is actually an empty space I can store something there so um, what I do here is I store the return address that's the uh, address the return of the operating system into that stack space offset by four the the place that was occupied I jump on link I go to PRTT and what it does is it returns the address of the next instruction in this register right here so if when I want to come back all I have to do is say jump register dollar sign RA and it comes back and starts executing at this right here, which is I restore the uh, the original stack, the original return address, and then I restore the stack space. So that's how you call a routine. I do the same thing here, which uh, I print out a message that says, uh, um, you know, hey, the computer's going to move. I call a routine that moves the computers. Uh, what it does is it uh, returns to me in um, uh, uh, what it does is it returns to me in V0, it returns to me the location of where I want to store that X. So that's what I get back from it. And um, I, I load the byte of X into a register and then I take that X and I put it in that location that was returned back to me. I print the board and you're going to see a lot of duplications here. Then I ask for to get the humans first move. I have a special routine called move H which does that for me and, and in that routine what I do is I ask the user to give me a number between 1 and 9 and I do two things. First of all I check to see if it's uh, below 1 or above 9 that would make it illegal and if it is within 1 and 9 I check to see if there's something in that space already. Is there an X or an O in that space already? 
Uh, if any of those fails, I just keep sitting there and asking the human to enter a number between 1 and 9. Once I get that back, again, um, V0 contains the address of where the O goes, and I just load the O and uh, uh, store it in that location. I print the board off. I get the computer's second move. I print the board. I get the human's second move. I print the board. I get the computer's third move. I print the board. And then I check for a winner. Checking for the winner is I just call a routine called win. And what it does is it checks the rows, the columns, and the diagonals. Now, if I um, get a win uh, in V0, what's going to happen, that's my return parameter, it'll be non-zero. If it's zero, that means I haven't got a winner. Okay, And I just continue processing. If I do have a winner, then I branch to a label called W, which that's where the program stops. It prints out the winner and continues on. After the humans moved three times, and that's possible for them to win too. Now, I could have taken all of this and I could have put it into a loop. I could have had the computer move, and then I could have had a loop where the human computer, human computer, human computer did that uh, four times, uh, and I could I could maybe have compressed the code, but it, it would have executed in the same amount of time. I would have used another register. Uh, which is the best way? I don't really know. I've, I've written both. Um, uh, if you don't like uh, the amount of code, but again, it's just very, very straightforward. So here I'm just going through and doing the moves uh, for the computer and the um, human, check, uh, printing the board and checking for a winner. And here is, after I've, I've done all of this, if by at this point, if there's no winner, then it has to be a tie. I load the message that says it's a tie, and this jump register RA says stop the game. Okay. This is if it's a win, what I do is I save the winning character. That's in V0. Okay. I save the winning character, and uh, what I do is uh, I print a message that says, hey, the winner is, and this, uh, this right here, uh, load byte 11, tells Syscall to print a character. I take the winning character. <clears throat> and move it into A0, print it off, I print out an in the line character, and I stop the program. This is my uh, print the tic tac toe board. Very straightforward. I, that's again, load byte of the uh, first square, print it off, print a vertical bar, print the second square. You'll notice that I don't have to load uh, 11 in V0. Once I do that, it's there already. I don't have to do it again. So I'm just printing off a, a character, a bar. Uh, I print off dashes, that's a string. Um, then I print off the third line, the dashes, and then the fourth line, and then print on it, pin the character, and then this jump register returns it back to the calling routine. This is the routine for uh, getting a number. I check to see if it's uh, uh, less than one or greater than nine. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, um, this is actually this is the one that uh, checks for the uh, the computer's move. Is there something in there already? If there's an X and an O in there already, then it just goes back up here and tries to get the next square. It just does them in sequence. And uh, whenever first time it finds one that doesn't have an X or an O, it uh, moves that into V0 and returns the address. And this is the one for the human where I check to see if it's uh, less than 1, greater than 9. That's uh, You'll see branch on less than 1 right here. The 1 is in a T1. Uh, and then I'll load immediate and 9, do the same thing for 9. And then uh, I check to see if, uh, if it's got a good address. In other words, if there's something in there already. Okay, uh, this is actually the uh, the square that checks to see if the space is occupied, if there's an X and O in it already. And then um, uh, this one is uh, checking the rows, the columns, and the diagonals. And uh, again, all I'm doing here is calling a routine where I check the rows, the columns, and the diagonals. Again, this, this rows right here checks all three rows. The columns checks all three columns and then the diagonal checks the two diagonals. Here is the code to check for the rows, 
again very simple it ejects just it loads the values of rows 1 2 and or the columns of 1 2 and 3 for any individual row checks to see if they're same uh, if they are, are are the same then it uh, returns that character um, otherwise uh, what it just returns a zero same thing with the columns uh, it's exactly like rows except the offsets are a little different um, the diagonals is a is a little different uh, in that uh, there's only two diagonals and what I have here is I just hard coded the checking the you'll see the uh, 1, 5, and 9, and 3, 5, and 7 diagonals. I just hard code those in there. So this is a very, very uh, straightforward little tic-tac-toe game that uh, I have the students, right? Uh, there are probably a half a dozen different ways to do this. This is just one, and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you find it useful uh, in uh, developing your own MIPS programs. Anyway, thank you for listening.